Hello friends, welcome to Fairs Club Learn to Lead. This is Ashu and today we will discuss very important trend fairs of 13th of October 2021. You can see two best images of the day, but today we will discuss very important and the most important trend fairs. So watch this video till last. But I am requesting you all the student that you have to download our application Careers Cloud from the description box link. After that, log in with the email ID, then click on this crack current fair section to subscribe our current fairs for one year as well as for two years. Both the subscription prices are very much low, but we are covering very important and the most important current fairs, which are very important for every type of exam. This is the hard work of Affairs Cloud team. But how we are covering this current fair? We are providing you daily section. In the daily section, you will receive three things. One is detail. Second is question and answer format. And third is the quiz section, which you can attempt on our application on daily basis. Next is the weekly section. Again, we are providing three things. One is detail. Second is question and answer format. And third is the quiz section, which you can attempt on our application on weekly basis. Most important is the monthly section. And we are providing four type of PDFs. One is detail current fair. Second is question and answer format of current fair. Third is the best 100 current fair that is also provided in the form of question and answer. And fourth one is the pocket PDF. It means two liner and the three liners current fair will be provided to you so that you can revise these current fairs uh, in quick format before your exam. But to enhance your performance further, we are providing you 20 most important topic wise PDF. It means if you want to cover one particular topic before your exam, you can pick this uh, topic wise PDF. If you are a banking student, we are providing three things. One is detail, second is question and answer format, and third is the quiz section. But all these three things are only related to banking and economy, but you can attempt this quiz on our application on monthly basis. If you want to cover all the past current fair of 2021 just from single PDF, then you can use this exam PDF for the revision purpose. Uh, we are also providing budget and economic survey. Detail will be provided and expected question and answer also provided so that you can recall that examiner can make these type of questions from budget and economic survey. If you are appearing for your uh, respective state exam, then we are also providing state current fairs and we are covering every state and union territory. So all these things uh, covered under only one subscription. We are not charging different different prices. Uh, all these things are covered under one subscription. You have to just download our application careers cloud from the description box link. After that, log in with the email ID, then click on this crack current fair section to subscribe our current fairs for one year as well as for two years. Both the subscription prices are very much low. But if you're a new student, you're just starting your preparation, then I'm advising you to subscribe for two years. And there is very less price difference between one year and the two year subscription. But on both subscriptions, we are providing 10% extra discount if you use this code ASH10. If you have any query, you can email us or you can call us on this number or email ID. So let's start. 13th of October 2021 current fair. But I am requesting you all the student that you have to like this video. Every student who are watching this video, please like this video. Share this video as maximum as possible at least to your one friend. And please subscribe this channel before proceeding. And join our telegram group from the description box link for future notifications. First question, who has been appointed as the chairman of the board of Bharat Pay? So we are talking about chairman of one board of which company it is Bharat Pay. Very important company and answer of this question is very simple. Answer is C, Rajneesh Kumar. So Rajneesh Kumar, uh, who was the former uh, chairman of uh, State Bank of India, has been appointed as the chairman of the board of Bharat Pay, an Indian leading financial technological company. So you can say it is fintech company. And he will be mentor the Bharat Pay team during his transition into a small finance bank. And uh, he will also take part in defining the short term and the long term strategies of the Bharat Pay. And Rajneesh Kumar has served as the chairman of the SBA from 2017 to 2020. And remember Bharat Pay. This is very important because Bharat Pay has emerged as the largest business to business lender in the financial services industry and has become a unicorn startup. Uh, unicorn means a company with a valuation of over one billion dollar. One billion dollar. So this means unicorn. And you can also remember Bharat Pay uh, CEO is Ashneer Grover. Most important question. Ashneer Grover. And uh, its group president is uh, Suhail Sumir. But you don't have to remember. You have to just remember chief executive officer is Ashneer Grover. Head office is in New Delhi. It means headquarters in New Delhi. And it was founded in the year of 2018. So all things are very, very important. But other appointments you can also see here like Amit Saxena. We have to change the color so that you can easily mark Amit Saxena. Uh, he was recently appointed as CTO of RBI Innovation Hub. Remember, RBI Innovation Hub. CTO stands for Chief Technical Officer. Next, Pavan Kumar Goenka. Uh, he was recently appointed as Chairperson of Indian National Space Promotion Authorization. 
so uh, it means you can say it is in space it is in space in space stands for indian national space promotion authorization center authorization center next is raninder singh he was recently appointed as the president of national rifle association of india national rifle association of india all the appointments are very very important you can also see here the picture of rajneesh kumar who joins bharat pay board as the chairman move to next question who is appointed as the chief executive officer of very important company of indian government and that is energy efficiency services limited so a uh, ceo who was uh, recently appointed and name of this person is arun kumar mishra d is the answer so the energy efficiency services limited it is basically a, a joint venture of two companies one is uh, ntpc limited that is national uh, thermal power corporation rural Electrif uh, electrification corporation plus power finance corporation and uh, one company is more basically it is a trilateral uh, joint venture and third one is power grid corporation so i am repeating again it is a joint venture of ntpc power finance corporation and power grid corporation and who is appointed as the chief executive officer of this organization it is arun kumar mishra and he will be responsible for eesl operations and he will succeed the vice chair per, uh, chairperson of eesl saurav kumar who was earlier uh, um, who was earlier appointed as the acting ceo of this organization so you have to just remember this organization eesl uh, and uh, its chairperson is k shrikant k shrikant its headquarters is in new delhi and uh, it was founded in the year of 2000 nine just remember uh, only the name of the chief executive officer but other appointments you can see here again very very important you can see here ikbal singh lalpura very important appointment because he was recently appointed as chairperson of national commission for minorities national commission for minorities next nirlep singh rai uh, he was recently appointed as chief uh, sorry uh, chairman and managing director of national fertilizer, fertilizer limited chairman and managing director of national fertilizer limited next vartika shukla most important guys remember this vartika shukla first woman chairperson of chairperson and even a managing director of engineers limited india engineers limited india so you have to remember chairperson and managing director of uh, engineers india limited vartika shukla most important this question will be asked you can also see here the picture of arun kumar mishra who is appointed as the eesl chief executive officer Move to next. Who won twenty second Lal Bahadur Shastri National Award for Excellence? Very important question. And this twenty second Lal Bahadur Shastri National Award uh, uh, for Excellence was presented to honor the exemplary standards of the morality in the public life. And uh, this award goes to Dr. Randeep Guleria. Who is Dr. Randeep uh, Randeep Guleria? Uh, he is currently working as the director of AIMS, director of AIMS Delhi. so you have to just remember dr randeep guleria and dr guleria got this award for creating awareness about the pandemic and devotion to duty nurturing the department of uh, uh, you can say pulmonary medicine and sleep disorders in the aims so very important especially during the time of pandemic this person works so much hard so that's why this person got this 22nd lal bahadur shastri national award for excellence so it is randeep guleria So now we are moving to very important question section you have to like this video share this video and subscribe this channel all the students who are watching this video please like this video and please share to at least your one friend and before proceeding to the third or i think fourth question then uh, please subscribe this channel and join our telegram group from the description box link yes this is a fourth question which country unveiled the world's first automated driverless train this is the keyword for you driverless train and uh, there is a company which is name as doche company d e u t s h e doche bahen company bahen is a name of a uh, city in uh, germany so it is a doche bahen company and uh, the name of the country is germany so german rail operator doche bahen and industrial group siemens unveiled the world first automated driverless train in the city of hamburg in germany so you can also remember the exact name of the city it is hamburg city and it is a joint venture of two companies one is the doche bahen and second is siemens company so examiner can also ask the name of the company it is siemens and according to them it is more punctual and energy efficient than traditional trains even four more driverless trains will join the northern city of uh, uh, you can say uh, german area and these rails will start carrying passengers from december 2021 and uh, uh, they will using the existing rail infrastructure and will be sharing tracks with other regular trains 
uh, although the train is fully automated because it is a driverless train but a driver will still be present to supervise journeys uh, whenever there are passengers on board so uh, it is driverless train and it is started by germany and it is the world's first country who started this type of train and uh, remember about germany germany's president is frank walter frank walter and uh, capital is berlin and currency is euro so you can all uh, you can remember all these things so you can see here germany unveils world's first self driving train it is driverless train and it is uh, with the technique of artificial intelligence what is the name of official mascot of under 17 women's world cup india 2022 so first of all you have to remember that uh, the seventh edition the seventh edition of biennial seventh edition of biennial international football tournament the 2022 fifa under 17 world cup women under 17 world cup uh, it will be hosted by india from 11th of october to 30th of october 2022 and uh, you can also remember the announcement coincided with the international day of the girl child we uh, yesterday covered this question because international day of girl child is celebrated on 11th of october and it will also start on the 11th of october 2022 and official mascot is iba so you have to remember answer of this question is b so fifa unveiled iba uh, iba means an asiatic lioness an asiatic lioness and uh, uh, it is uh, an official mascot of under 17 women's world cup 2022 and iba represents women power you can also see here the picture of iba so this is iba and iba represents women power and the objective of the mascot is to inspire girls and the women around the world to work up to their full potential So Iba is a strong, playful and charming Asiatic lioness. It aims to inspire and encourage women and girls by using teamwork, resilience, kindness and empowering others. And you have to remember this is 2022 under 17 Women's World Cup. It will be hosted by India in October 2022. And the announcement coincided with the International Day of the Girl Child because 11th of October every year is celebrated as the International Day of Girl Child. And Germany, you can also remember Germany became the first team to qualify for 2022 World Cup remember this and uh, you can also remember one thing here like FIFA yes you can remember FIFA Federation International the Football Association who will organize this uh, World Cup and uh, its president is uh, Gianni Infantino or Gianni Infantino and uh, headquarters is in Zurich headquarters is in Zurich Zurich is in Switzerland So moving to next question next is who became the first indian non banking financial company that has launched instant business loans on whatsapp so this is a keyword so they will provide the loans on whatsapp and this is the first non banking financial company for india and this company is ifl finance answer of this question is c and what is the meaning of ifl finance it means india info line limited india info line info line limited and this company uh, became the first indian non banking financial company that has announced instant business loans on whatsapp up to rupees 10 lakh up to rupees 10 lakh or you can say 1 million and this facility will enable the whatsapp users to avail loan with minimum documentation and get approval in 5 minutes so this is so much fast and it will benefit whatsapp users like 45 crore plus users in india who can avail this 24 into 7 loan facility so you can remember it is ifl finance or india info line limited and uh, its headquarters is in mumbai and its managing director is venkta raman managing director is venkta raman but it is not important so just remember the name of the company so you can see here ifl finance launches instant business loan on whatsapp but remember the maximum limit is 10 lakh rupees next is quad nations will conduct second phase of malabar exercise so all you know malabar exercise is in uh, is in between four countries like quad nations these quad nations are like uh, australia india usa and japan so these are the quad countries and recently in person meeting was held in united states of america first in person meeting was held in united states of america and second phase of this malabar exercise will be conducted in bay of bengal so answer of this question is b so quad countries like india australia japan and the usa started the second phase of 25th edition so this will be the 25th edition of the joint naval exercise that is malabar 2021 in the bay of bengal region and this is a 3 day long naval exercise and its main aim to build coordination and uh, you can say interoperability 
among the navies that has established during the first phase. And in the second phase, you can remember that Indian side is represented by INS Ranvijay, INS Ranvijay, INS Satpura, INS Satpura and Poseidon 8I, uh, a long uh, a long range maritime patrol aircraft and a submarine. So four things uh, will represent India. One is INS Ranvijay, INS Satpura, next is Poseidon 8I patrol aircraft and uh, a submarine. And uh, you can also remember about this quad group. Uh, examiner can ask this quadrilateral security dialogue is a grouping of four countries I already told you and it was initiated I think maximum student uh, don't know this that it was initiated uh, uh, in 2007 under the proposal of Japanese Prime Minister at that time it was Shinzo Abe Shinzo Abe later in 2017 under the ASEAN meeting under the ASEAN summit the four countries agreed to revive this quad alliance and the main motive is to counter China's rising influence and maintain a free Indo-Pacific region. So it is just to tackle the, uh, you can say, rise of China in the Indo-Pacific uh, region. And uh, uh, you can also remember this Malabar exercise. Malabar exercise firstly started in 1992, but it is bilateral exercise at the time. It was only in between India and United States of America. But in 2015, Japan joined. If Japan joined, it means uh, it becomes the trilateral exercise. But in 2020, Australia also added under this group. So it will become quad exercise. And this is the 25th edition of this naval exercise. But you can also remember very important thing like you can see here the four countries. Like uh, with United States of America, India is doing so many exercises. Like with United States of America, you can say uh, there is Yudh Abhyas, Yudh Abhyas exercise. Uh, it is a naval exercise, uh, basically a Yudh Abhyas is a military exercise with the United States of America. And uh, uh, there is a military exercise more Vajar Parhar, Vajar Parhar. This is also a military exercise between India and United States of America. With Japan, you can say uh, there is exercise which is known as Jim X. Jim X, it is a naval exercise uh, or Navy exercise, you can say. Uh, one exercise which is known as Shinyu Metri. Shinyu Metri, it is also a air exercise, air exercise, Shinyu Metri. And there is Dharma Guardian, Dharma Guardian. This is also exercise between India and Japan and it is also a military exercise. And with Australia, India is conducting two exercises. One is US Index, US Index, US Index very simple, Australia, India defense exercise. It is a naval exercise and one is Astra Hind, Astra Hind. So you can also remember this Astra Hind means Australia and uh, India. So that's why its name is Astra Hind. It is also a military exercise. So one is naval, second is military. So remember Vajar Parhar, Yudh Abhyas with the United States of America, Jimex, Shinnu Metri and Dharma Guardian with Japan and US Index and Astra Hind belongs to India and Australia. Next, what is the name of proposed airline which is backed by Rakesh Junjunwalaji? Most important question guys, this can be asked in exam and uh, there is a company which is known as SNV. Aviation Limited, Aviation Limited and Ministry of Civil Aviation give uh, no objection certificate to this SNV uh, Aviation Limited to operate commercial flights across India under the brand name Akasa Air. So answer of this question is D. So this NOC will be followed by security background check after which the airline will apply the air operator permit from the uh, Directorate Journal of the Civil Aviation. So it comes under the Ministry of Civil Aviation by default because we are talking about any airline. And name of this airline is Akasa Air. Why this person is in news, Aka, uh, Rakesh Junjunwala? Because uh, it should be noted that this proposed airline is backed by Rakesh Junjunwala, uh, who is also known as Big Bull. I'm not talking about uh, Abhishek Bachchan. I'm talking about Rakesh Junjunwala, Big Bull and uh, Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett of India. Warren Buffett of India. So he is known as Big Bull of India or Warren Buffett of India. Even uh, uh, this is also uh, uh, airline which is proposed by Jet Airways CEO, uh, Vine Dubey. Vine Dubey. So he will also uh, he will also become the CEO of Akasa Airline when it will be started. And Rakesh Junjunwala has invested almost 250 crore rupees in this airline. And remember this SNV Aviation, it will ultra low cost carrier which will be India's most dependable, affordable and greenest airline. So this will be Akasa airline and it will be started in the mid of 2022. So remember, it is backed by Rakesh Junjunwala and Jet Airways former CEO uh, Vine Dubey. So name of the airline is Akasa airline and it will be started in mid 2022 and name of the company is SNV Aviation. 
एस एन वी एविएशन नाउ वी आर मूविंग टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन बट यू कैन ऑल्सो रिमेंबर मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ सिविल एविएशन हियर ज्योतिरादित्य सिंधिया जी एंड कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंसी मध्य प्रदेश ही इज मेंबर ऑफ राज्यसभा यू कैन सी हियर राकेश झुंझुनवाला बिग बुल ऑफ इंडिया बिग बुल सो रिमेंबर एंड बॉर्न बॉफेट ऑफ इंडिया वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड ही रिसेंटली मेट विद द प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफ इंडिया नरेंद्र मोदी जी नेक्स्ट इज ईजी टैप हैज कलेबरेटेड विद विच बैंक टू ऑफर ए न्यू सर्विस एप्लीकेशन विच इज नोन एज माई व्यापार व्यापार इज ए हिंदी वर्ड इट इज ऑल्सो नोन एज बिजनेस माई बिजनेस टू रिटेल बिजनेस इज इन इंडिया सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एप्लीकेशन माई व्यापार इज लॉन्च बाय ईजी टैप एंड ईजी टैप हैज कलेबरेटेड विद एक्सिस बैंक एक्सिस बैंक टू ऑफर ए न्यू सर्विस एप्लीकेशन विच इज माई व्यापार टू रिटेल बिजनेस इज इन इंडिया एंड माई व्यापार एप्लीकेशन प्रोवाइड बिजनेस विद ए सिंगल व्यू ऑफ ऑल क्रेडिट ट्रांजेक्शन all credit transactions that can be assessed any time anywhere and this application also aims at motivating the merchants to increase the use of digital payments by incentivizing them with rewards upon achieving bank goals and through this service the axis bank will provide digital payment management for the merchants it means this application uh, behavior will be provided by easy tap and uh, all the banking transactions of the banking facilities will be provided by axis bank and around 50000 Fifty thousand smart POS devices have been deployed with my vapor across more than sixteen hundred cities in India. So all the POS fifteen thousand POS will be now attached with the my vapor, and any uh, retail businessman can uh, uh, check their transactions at anywhere at uh, any time. So this is Axis Bank. You have to remember, Axis Bank uh, CEO is Amitabh Chaudhary. Amitabh Chaudhary, headquarters is in Mumbai, and it was founded in nineteen ninety three. Its tagline is "Badhti ka naam Jindagi." बढ़ती का नाम जिंदगी सो यू कैन सी यर इजी टैप पार्टनर विद एक्सिस बैंक टू ब्रिंग माई व्यापार फॉर द रिटेल सेगमेंट हु बिकेम्स द फर्स्ट इंडियन वोमेन टू स्कोर टन इन ए पिंक बॉल टेस्ट मैच एंड इट वॉज अगेंस्ट ऑस्ट्रेलिया एंड दिस प्लेयर इज वन एंड ओनली समृति मंदाना सो रिमेंबर समृति मंदाना बिकम्स द फर्स्ट इंडियन वोमेन टू स्कोर टन इन द पिंक बॉल टेस्ट एंड इंडियन वोमेन क्रिकेट टीम ओपनर समृति मंदाना बिकेम द फर्स्ट इंडियन वोमेन टू स्कोर ए सेंचुरी and she played a 127 run uh, uh, against australia in the one of pink ball test and she is also the indians first woman to score a century on the australian soil so you can remember she is only the india's first woman to score a century on australian soil and this player is smriti mandana very important question guys and remember australia beat india by 14 runs in the third and the final t20 final t20 women's international to seal the multi format series by 11 5 now you are thinking uh, what is this 11 5 so we are combining all the three formats uh, so it means all the three formats have been clubbed together and uh, 11 matches uh, like uh, t20 world uh, you can say test matches and uh, odi matches all the combination so 11 matches won by australia and five matches won by india so um, australia won this series and beat india by 14 runs in the final t20 match and claimed this series t20 series by 2 0 Next is highlights of the Denmark Prime Minister Mette Frederiksen visit to India 9 to 11th of October 2021 total four MOUs were signed between India and Denmark but you have to just remember one or two important things which were signed between India and Denmark that uh, uh, the name of the prime minister of uh, Denmark this is uh, Mette Frederiksen and uh, the visit is aimed at further strengthening and enhancing the friendly relationship between the two nations like India and Denmark and the two nations the most important thing the two nations prime minister have reconfirmed their commitment to green strategic partnership green strategic partnership gsp that have formed up a five year agreement or the action plan which is uh, from 2021 to 2026 to implement it focused on the ways to augment and consolidate green and low carbon growth so this is green strategic partnership between india and denmark and it is for the five year partnership and it is for the action plan 2021 26 for the uh, for consolidated green and the low carbon growth and remember about denmark mette frederiksen is the prime minister capital is copenhagen and currency is danish krone next we are moving to important question section but you have to like this video every student who is watching this video please like this video please share this video to at least your one friend and please subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform and join our telegram group from the description box link so that you can know that video is uploaded so here is the question who launched the handbook on sustainable urban plastic waste management this report is basically prepared by two organization one is united nation development program and second is niti ayog 
but this report is released by niti ayog vice chairman dr rajiv kumar so answer of this question is niti ayog so remember uh, this report is known as sustainable urban plastic waste management and this report is launched in new delhi and uh, this is not basically a report it is a handbook and the book provides an outlook for the comprehensive overview of managing plastic waste by representing and discussing components of the entire plastic waste value chain and the plastic waste management rules 2016 was amended in the august 2021 to phase out single use plastic by the year of 2022 so remember single use plastic will be eliminated by the year of 2022 it is to tackle the adverse impacts of the littered plastic or both terrestrial and the aquatic ecosystem so this uh, handbook is released by niti ayog but it is prepared by united nation development program and niti ayog so you can also see here uh, niti ayog vice chairman uh, dr rajiv kumar launched this uh, united nation development uh, program handbook on the sustainable urban plastic waste management So next is ITCA Bengaluru launched seventy five student satellite consortium mission two thousand twenty two. So remember, we are celebrating seventy five year of independence. So one organization which is known as Indian Technology Congress Association, Indian Technology Congress Association, which is Bengaluru based organization in Karnataka, focuses on building synergies between academia, industry, and the research organization. So to commemorate the seventy five years of Indian independence. it will launch 75 student satellite consortium which is known as mission 2022 and uh, what will they do under this mission uh, a consortium of 75 students will build satellites which will be launched by indian space research organization and you can remember this organization it is indian technology congress association its headquarters in bengaluru karnataka and don't remember president just remember the name of the organization next is one liner important point and here is the first point but it is not so much important just read this point uh, one organization which is known as well spun corporation limited to develop world's first guideline for transportation of hydrogen gas in pipeline so now we will transfer the hydrogen gas through the pipeline so uh, this company this is well spun corporation limited the world's second largest manufacturer of the large diameter pipes based in mumbai has joined a global industry project to develop the world's first guideline for the transportation of hydrogen gas in existing and new offshore pipeline so we can transfer this hydrogen gas from one place to another place by the uh, you can say traditional pipelines or you can say by the uh, existing pipelines and the new offshore pipelines and this company wellspun corporation limited headquarters in mumbai and it is the first company from india to join the hydrogen pipe joint industry project on the hydrogen pipeline next is world day against the death penalty was observed on the 10th of october and uh, uh, the main aim to safeguard the health and rights of the women and girls across the globe and the day unifies the global abolishment movement and uh, mobilizes civil society to support the abolition of the capital punishment like india is also punishing the uh, india is also awarding the capital punishment but uh, uh, there is a slogan that we have to abolish the capital punishment all over world next is bharti exa life launches new saving product bharti exa life unnati just remember uh, this line only and uh, the main objective is to provide long term financial stability to individuals with the dual benefits of saving and protection in the single product so it means insurance also provided and one saving account is also provided so two things under one uh, program it is known as bharti exa life unnati next world migratory bird day 2021 on 9th of october why this question is uh, very important because it is not only observed in the month of october remember what i am saying uh, world migratory bird day is annually observed across the globe on two peak days on two peak days what is the meaning of this two peak days it means it is observed second saturday second saturday of may month and october month both it means in the year of 2021 it is celebrated on 8th of may in the month of may it means second saturday of the month of may and 9th of october 9th of october so remember 8th may and 9th of october world migratory bird day is celebrated in 2021 and it is to create awareness of the migratory birds and the importance of international cooperation to conserve the migratory birds and their habitat and uh, you can also remember the theme is sing fly soar like a bird like a bird which focuses on the phenomena of the word song and bird flight so just remember sing fly and soar like a bird 
नेक्स्ट इज गवर्नमेंट सेट टू सेल दी सब्सिडरीज ऑफ एयर इंडिया ऑलरेडी वो डिस्कस दिस क्वेश्चन लाइक फॉलोइंग दी प्राइवेटाइजेशन ऑफ एयर इंडिया द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया स्टार्टेड इट्स एसेट डिस्पोजल प्रोग्राम ऑफ एयर इंडिया सब्सिडरीज एंड एयर इंडिया एसेट होल्डिंग प्राइवेट लिमिटेड द फुली ओन रीजनल सब्सिडरी ऑफ एयर इंडिया कंसिस्ट ऑफ ए कंपनीज ऑफ ग्राउंड हैंडलिंग इंजीनियरिंग एंड अलायंस एयर टू बी प्राइवेटाइज फॉर द क्लियरिंग ऑफ इट्स लाइबिलिटीज एंड द डिस्पोजल ऑफ एसेट्स बिकॉज यस्टडे वी डिस्कस क्वेश्चन दैट वन कंपनी विच इज नोन एज टैलिस टैलिस प्राइवेट लिमिटेड विच इज ए सब्सिडरी ऑफ टाटा सन्स प्राइवेट लिमिटेड वन द फाइनल बिड फॉर अक्वायरिंग द नेशनल करियर एयरलाइन विच इज नोन एज एयर इंडिया बाई सबमिटिंग एटीन थाउजेंड क्रोड बेड नेक्स्ट इज लो इनकम कंट्रीज डेट रोज बाई ट्वेल्व परसेंट टू रिकॉर्ड एट सिक्सटी बिलियन इन टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी स्पेशली ड्यू टू पेंडेमिक एंड इट इज अ रिपोर्ट ऑफ वर्ल्ड बैंक एंड नेम ऑफ द रिपोर्ट इज इंटरनेशनल डेट स्टेटिक्स सिक्स टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू and the report called for urgent efforts to reduce debt levels and uh, uh, so much debt is increased especially in the low income countries due to covid-19 and total debt now increased to 860 billion dollar this is huge and remember about world bank uh, world bank was uh, uh, basically created in 1945 but it was created in the year of 1944 uh, by bretton wood conference along with the international monetary fund and uh, its uh, president is david r malpass and uh, he is currently the 13th president of uh, world bank headquarters in washington dc and member countries are 189 189 next we are moving to the question of the day 12th of october 2021 question and this question was from geography basically world geography which of the following is the largest lake in africa so most important question and asked in so many exams answer of this question is lake victoria lake victoria also known as victoria nyanza victoria nyanza this is also the other name largest lake in africa and chief reservoir of longest river all over world this is nile so lake victoria is the chief reservoir of the nile river lying mainly in the countries of tanzania and uganda so you can also see here the picture so this is lake victoria guys you can see here this is uganda this is tanzania so this Uh, lake victoria lies in between two countries mainly between two countries but some part also lies with kenya so it means you have to remember lake victoria touches uh, three countries one is uganda or lies in between three countries one is uganda tanzania and kenya or you can just remember k k t u or anything you can remember k t u u k t so you can also remember with this name so lake victoria is the largest lake in africa and it is the major chief reservoir of the nile river which is the longest river of india the no, longest river of world not india longest river of india is ganga it is 2525 km next is question of the day name of the commission which distributes the taxes between center and state now we are covering indian polity this question belongs to indian polity and uh, uh, this thing belongs to article 280 of the indian constitution if you remember article 280 then you can answer very easily and uh, name of the commission which distributes the taxes between center and states i am waiting your answer please uh, comment this answer i am waiting your answer and uh, please like this video we want 700 plus likes please share this video at least to your one friend and please subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform and join our telegram channel from the description box link and uh, press this bell button so that you can receive the official notification and it is a fair cloud promise that it will boost your confidence in the journal awareness section definitely don't take life so much serious life is fun always be happy always be happy thank you guys take care and bye bye